Meanwhile, the questions everyone keeps asking is, how is it humanly possible that a 777 aircraft just disappears for six days? Now, my next guest is calling this the greatest aviation mystery in the history of airlines and insists that a 777 doesn't just fall out of the sky. Aerospace engineer, former uh, U.S. Deputy Assistant Secretary of Transportation for Technology Policy, Dr. Oliver McGee is with us. Also is international commercial pilot, DJ Frost. Guys, good to see you. Thank you all for being with us. Dr. McGee, thank you. Uh, I agree. It's the greatest aviation mystery in history. Uh, and planes, triple sevens, don't just fall out of the sky now, do they? And transponders don't go off by themselves. Sean, this mystery is missing two things. The plane and patience. It's simply, this is baffling to aviation experts and the consequences are absolutely extraordinary. We've never seen anything like this in aviation safety and security history. Uh, I'd like to tap into Catherine's uh, focus on the system data that's coming in today. Uh, that system data is gonna look at the range to the, 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 the flight velocity of this aircraft, and that gives us about a, an estimate of the time of travel when these transponders uh, tapped off. And that time is, is based on three factors. The lift to drag of the Boeing 777. And on the other side, there is the rate weight ratio, the, the initial weight and the final weight. And then in between, you have this thing called in, impulse uh, 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 consumption of the uh, fuel inside. So once you multiply all of these three factors together, that gives you an estimate of the time, and that's why you see the Wall Street Journal article pointing to approximately about four hours of yep. range in the other well, direction. Well, right, you're talking about four hours of range, but certainly you get the reports that it was off course, off course significantly. Um, uh, DJ, you're a pilot. I, I don't know, have you flown the 777? I have not flown the 777, Sean. However, my theory, and this is what I shared on a Facebook post this morning, was that I estimated there was about six hours of fuel based on the route that they were going to take that day. Right. And based on that, maybe they did a turn, went at a lower altitude based on four hours, then, yeah, there's a radius there that needs to be discovered. Yeah. What I also think could have happened if they went out towards the Indian Ocean at that point is either could have been a controlled ditching. We know uh, Sully did it successfully. At night, it would have been quite a challenge. However, if either the pilots or a terrorist, somebody like that wanted it to happen, it could have happened. That, that could be a possibility at that but, point, or it could have been taken to some remote field that we don't even know of in the jungle. Well, all of which is a possibility, but we know A, the transponder was working and then it got turned off, right? So that raises exactly. my suspicion level. Then it was so far off course, according to reports, if, if they turn out to be true. And I, we've got to be careful. Uh, I agree with your admonition, uh, Dr. McGee. We, we don't want to jump to conclusions, but pilots have to turn off that transponder. The fact that nobody was able to track them, it was, it was 90 minutes before they realized this plane was missing from Chinese airspace. Um, that is somewhat con disconcerting to me because my experience with flight is you go from one traffic tr control center to another. Somebody's always monitoring your progress, right? Absolutely. And more importantly, Sean, what you're, raise what you're raising, the larger question on, in systems thinking here. Uh, we need good, reliable information and data to come in so we can have some reliable knowledge and understanding about aviation safety and security on an international scale. And long as we leave these questions open, this human story unfolds with the grieving families who are really hunting and searching for, uh, for information about their loved ones. All right, let, so, let me ask both of you this question. Is it true that, and there was one report, somewhat obscure source, so I don't know, that literally the engines and, and some of the equipment aboard this airplane with all the redundancy it has, that it actually sends out its own data and that some of that data may have been received about how their functioning is at any given time and moment. Is that true about that airplane? Yes, it is. Oh, yes. Um, um, yeah. It, wouldn't that, wouldn't no, that most, pinpoint most... its location then? I don't know if it pinpoints a location, but it could pinpoint then the power uh, usage of the airplane, if it was at full power, idle yes. power, th things like that. And also it could also, I guess you could judge then what altitude it was uh, coming in at based on um, the EPR setting, if, if they had an engine that had an EPR setting on it. So they can use those clues then to see what altitude it was 
uh, flying at at that point also within yeah. the route that it went off of. I, I got to tell you, I, I, I just agree with, with you, Dr. McGee. This is the greatest aviation mystery, and we need to get to the bottom of this because if something happened up in that airplane, and we don't find out about it, then that means we're vulnerable in the future. That's scary for, for anybody. And we need to know, an we got to get an answer to this, and I hope we will sooner than later. Guys, thank you. Appreciate uh, it. A lot you. more questions than answers tonight about the missing Malaysia.